Hello Internet and welcome to a new tutorial. Happy New Year, wishing you a year full of love, joy and blips and blops from your favorite synthesizers because this is really important. Now, in this very first tutorial of 2022, I've wanted to address the topic of multiband saturation, compression, multiband effects in general. And I want to demystify the fact that you need expensive plugins to do it. Actually, all you need is Ableton Live and a slight touch of nerdiness. Now, before diving into this tutorial, if you would like to support the channel, help me grow the project, make more psychedelic tutorials and music, you can always consider becoming one of my patrons, maybe buy my presets on Gumroad, or, you know, just leave a like, comment, subscribe if you're not already subscribed to the channel. This helps a lot. Now, back to the tutorial. What is multiband saturation compression effects? Uh, basically, we will split the frequency spectrum of the input signal into different bands, and we will apply effects to these bands individually, and then we will mix everything back together. The most obvious usage of the multiband saturation is the Psybase, where we rely heavily on the character created by the band splitting to get this desired modern Psytrance bass sound. Now, if you'd like to see me working on a Psytrance bass and learn everything you need to know about making a modern Psytrance bass, you can go to my Gumroad and get my side bass crash course over there. But now, getting back to the tutorial. So, what is happening in this multiband saturation thing? Uh, basically, we're splitting the signals using equalizers, or to be more precise, filters. And the filtering that is happening in here is creating phase shift, because filtering just creates phase shift. And the simplest way to create this in Ableton Live is by using EQ3, because it doesn't have a linear response. It's actually modeled after analog gear. Now, I'm coding from Ableton's manual, EQ3, a good, powerful analog filter cascade rather than a clean digital filter, unlike EQ8, which, as I said, has a linear response. We don't want that. So how we're going to do all of this wizardry? Here we have a really, really simple project. Nothing too special. Kick, bass, and some drums. It sounds like this. Nothing too special. Now, let's go to the baseline and we will work with it. So. Let's take EQ3 in here. So it's pretty simple, EQ3. We have three bands in here, each with uh, a volume knob. We won't touch that. And each knob has a mute button. And here we have two knobs to create the range of the frequencies of each band. And here we have the slope of the filtering used to create these bands, as I've explained earlier. So. How are we going to create this? Let's take a scope, first of all. And I'll use size scope. And I'll leave it here for now. Now, we'll take EQ3. We will group it. And when we will click on this little icon in here, you, as you can see, we have a chain. So this is really interesting in the uh, audio effect tracks in Ableton because we can duplicate these chains and so what it's doing is basically it's taking the input signal and it's just rout routing it or duplicating it as much as we need so like so we can create you know parallel uh, channels chains and just apply different effects to them all now all we need is the splitting so I'll call the first one low the second one mid and the last one high and what I'm going to do in here, I'll route the frequency low knob in here on all of the three EQ3s to the one macro so I can control them all with only one knob. So let's do like so. So now one knob will create, will uh, one knob will control the lows. I'll do the same thing for the highs. Perfect, and the same thing for the slope of each filter, so we can control the slopes. Perfect. 
perfect. Now we can switch between 24 decibel proactive or 48 decibel proactive. And the last thing that we need to do is mute the bands according to each channel. So for the heights, I'll mute mids and lows. Mids, I'll mute lows and highs. Lows, I'll mute mid and high. And now I'll turn it off. I'll look at the size scope. And by the way, it's free. And if I'll hit play, check the bass that we already have. Pretty straightforward saw wave. I'll turn it on. Check this out. We got some weirdness going on because of this phase shift. And this is what we're looking for, this phase shift in here. So if I'll set the slope to 48 decibel per octaves, we got even more phase shift and like more, yeah, that's weirdness going on. So what I'm going to do, I'll set the lows in here to around 120 hertz. And this is like a little bit arbitrary, you know, like it's not, precise. It's just for the sake of the demonstration. And the highs, I'll set them to 7,000 or 7k. And the slope, I'll set it again to 24 decibel per octave. Now we have this. Pretty nice. Now, if I'll turn it off, hear how it already affected the sound. We, we still didn't add anything. We just have equalizers. And this phase shifting is creating something actually kind of pleasing, you know? Perfect. And now what is really nice about this technique is that you can add whatever effect you would like on these channels. So instead of being limited to the algorithms in Saturn, for example, uh, well, you can use whatever you like in here. So I can use maybe a uh, decapitator on the mids. I can add the Vertigo VSM3 on the lows, for example. You know, I'm just adding yeah this is really for the sake of the demonstration you know like i'm just adding whatever so now i'll just yeah crank that drive a little bit pretty nice now if i'll turn off the effect track we have this if i'll turn it if i'll turn it on back again Not the best of saturation ever made, but you get the idea. You know, I'm just doing, you know, whatever with these with these parameters just to demonstrate the idea of what we can do. But as I said, if you really want to go deep with Cytron Space, the crash course is on my gum road. So go check it out. And um, yeah. Uh, yeah, this is too much what's going on in your refs and DC offset and stuff. But anyways, I'm just going really hardcore on my saturation. But what's really nice is that now you can add saturation, then you can add compression, then you can add whatever you like. The point is, we got this splitting going on and then we can do whatever we like with it. And uh, yeah, with this, this is the end of this tutorial. I really hope you've liked it and I really hope you've learned something new. And yeah, see you next time.